Guys, you're watching Tampa Fishing Outfitters live fishing report. Bro, that was so, pretty weak. Can you come in a little yeah. It was, it was <laughs> coming <laughs> hot, son. It scared, yeah. it scared me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, watch. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys, we're here. We appreciate you joining us. We got a few of us uh, already tuned in here. Angelo's and, uh, already on. Yeah, I, I saw Ken. Ken. Saw Ken chiming in there. So, guys, we appreciate you joining us for another hour of fish talk here in tampa bay yeah and um we're gonna bring it son yeah we got a lot of events in the last few days to talk about i know all of us been on the water fishing so lots of reports to talk about I'm sure we're gonna get some questions about the weather the next few days so we've got quite a bit to, yeah to we'll just kind of backtrack so we had the event here last week we had a good yeah. turnout here at tampa fishing Great outfitters informant mode informant mode oh right. no here we go. Sweet. Here we go. Which one? All three, Rick? So if we talk real slow, it'll really mess them up. Yeah. I don't call it in foreign mode. I, you know, there was a slowed down rat face. I think that's slow, slowed We're down We're just going to do like black blobs over our face. And yeah. Like, What's up, Jace? We're creepy. On the cell shore. <laughs> <laughs> this is Captain X. This is Captain X. Yeah. Captain X. <laughs> I can't tell you where all the redfish are. Where are those redfish? Captain X. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're you're on a roll. Manny, today. Kevin, we're working on it, guys. Uh, hopefully, it'll get better here in a second. We I sound okay. <laughs> Jason, Jason sounds, sounds okay. So the, the retard sounds okay. Perfect. Yeah, here, trade Travis mics. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to get just a whole. Who's dropping the mixtape? Yeah. Probably. Well, um, you know, I'm sure. Even if it's slowed down, you'll still be able to make it out while. Travis works on fixing. Let me see. No, I'll, go, I'll go back here and check. But um, yeah, let's Travis. Yeah, bro. he's always <laughs> taking one for the team. Yeah. So you know, talking about our event last week, um, huge turnout here yeah, at Tampa Fishing Outfitters. Out with the, uh, I don't know how many people were here, um, but I know we floated a keg. Did you? Yeah. Man. Uh, I mean, it took us a few minutes after y'all left. When your last name is Beers, you better float the keg. Well, I didn't lead that charge. Come on, son. Um, you know, I really had Kenny in there, um, you know, helping out. Uh, couldn't have done it without you, buddy. Uh, but, no, there was a lot of people that showed up. Um, we raised almost $600 just in raffles, uh, just in the raffle tickets that we suggested people donate towards. Got all those prizes out to everybody, so that was huge. Um, that's definitely going to directly benefit those. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely going to make an impact, um, and it's going to make an impact to – you know, the people that we feel like need it uh, right now. I know there's a lot of support going up there, a lot of supply runs. But, 
you know, sometimes what gets lost in that mix is, you know, charter captains, tackle shops, um, bait shops, anybody who who really depends on the water to make a living. So yeah, and 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 kudos to you guys, TFO, Mr. Lee, uh, Joy, you for for putting the extra ten percent in out of the sales yeah. and and doing what y'all always do, which is good stuff. Um, yeah. It was fun too. I can tell you, um, you know, we had our bass flipping contest, yeah, which I didn't get into, um, but I know there, those guys were having fun. Uh, we had thirteen fish and donate some reels for that. We did the, um, we did the humpback uh, cast net. I know, content. man. I it's, felt like a wuss. I didn't get a pancake. You didn't have enough beers in you. I, I've gotten a little worse at throwing than that. I don't know if it's just getting old and just don't probably age. It. I'm like, yeah, that'll yeah. work. I used to take a little more pride in pancake, and I'm yeah. like, dude, I got 75%. Yeah. I measure the success of the net by the bait in it, not the, pa- yeah. not the, not the diameter. And the more the bait, the less you got to open it. Exactly. Man, um, I hear some excuses rolling yeah. over here, man. Well, Travis, you, hung you, his, X. Travis hung his net on three pilings. The hey, pilings that were dr- I'm And the boat. Down. And the I'm boat, And the boat. Gel coat check. No, Joko check was, was freaking Captain X over here. Well, I'm not used to throwing on Canyon Bays anymore. You want me to say? <laughs> but, uh, I was off the back anyways. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, big shout-out to Eric Olson, who won the 10-foot uh, division for that. Oh, dude. Yeah, cool. So Sweet. Eric, um, I don't know if you're watching or not, buddy, but we've got a humpback shirt for you. You sent me your sign. Here you are. But, um, yeah, all in all, good event. Oh, fly time or the fly fishing um contest that we had the fly casting we need the longest cast next time accuracy is for the birds man well accuracy is really the only thing that matters in fly nah. fishing. not when you get them chummed up <laughs> <laughs> yeah long distance on the chum <laughs> that's what i'm talking yeah. about <laughs> but that you know a roll tonight dude. right <laughs> there was up dude let it rip dude let it rip yeah i put a big old uh bait fish pattern in there but um yeah, yeah, it was a cool event, man. I I uh I got here a little late. Daughter had the uh, volleyball, but mm-hmm. man, I showed up and people were having fun. Everybody's in the parking lot. Yeah, stuff's going across the counter, getting sold. It was a it was fun, man. They did a good job. Ty Colby's uh, kids running amok. Yeah, nets, even with uh, flies, flipping bass, and then no Ed Sheeran. Come yeah. on, I bet you we, we had more people. We had more people did. here. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, and it was cheaper. Yeah, just saying. So we had that event, and then um, why don't you give a recap? Uh, I know we got to get out, we all all of us got out there along with Rick and a bunch of other guys to the Florida Guy Association. Yeah, it was meet. a uh, it was a great success. Um, there was a bunch of people involved. Travis had some great ideas with the uh, red fishery idea. We ran with that. Um, you know, you guys did some promotions on here. Um, Flats Mafia guys did some promotions. A lot of people involved. Uh, you know, I took some credit for it, which I'm all right with that. But it was like, good job. But no, yeah. I'm like, hey, it's a team effort, man. You guys helped me a lot. You know, Travis isn't really on the board, um, but we're going to get him there when, you know, when stuff opens up because – he, and it and it comes or you know so I bounce ideas off of just not board right. members but like Steve Betts, yeah. Um, you know Justin had a great idea last night. Justin Lafaro from the Flats Mafia. You know I bounce stuff off Jim, so it helps me because sometimes when you organize something like this, you kind of get honed in on just trying to make sure things are going right. You got somebody on the sidelines kind of chirping at you, saying, "Hey man, check this out. Do that." So it was a big team effort. Um. I think Charlie threw a number, 19 people signed up, which is huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how many we had. I'll take a guess. Least it's hard to tell. It's probably like 30, 30 or 30, 35 people. If I, I don't know more than that. Previously? No, yeah. no, I'm just saying like at the – you're talking about at the – Yeah, I don't know. Well, 50, 60 people. Well, I'm just mean like people that were for there for us. There were some people at the bar. Or just right. Yeah, it, know, was whatever, a, it was a good event. Um, I would have liked more. But I do understand that it that the traffic, the Hula Bay did an excellent job. The food was great. Uh, the downside is the construction over there. I don't mm-hmm. go there that much. And when I got over there, I said, oh, man, this is a train wreck. I know Dave texted me, said he couldn't make it because of the traffic. Uh, there was quite a few people sent me texts to say just got, they can't make it because they're stuck in traffic or whatever. Yeah. So I get yeah. it. Um, to the guys that did show up, a lot of younger guys – and uh, I commend each and every one of you guys. Um, I think that that uh, shows where your mind is in this business. Yeah. And I also think that it shows your dedication 
to the industry and, and I made a comment last night I stick by it it's like when I got in this business I wanted to be a fishing guy but also wanted to try to make a difference for the for the next people I think somebody has to do that each generation each generation of fishing guides if we all think it's are you I, I it really don't matter but if we all take that approach I think we're better but it was a it was a great event um everything went good I I really was excited to give Danny his uh, lifetime membership award. That was cool. It was, man, and, and as long as we've done stuff together. And, and Travis knows Again? Danny very well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. So it it, uh, it was a great event, and glad to see Charlie come in. And, and uh, them events we need to do, I think, two a year minimum. You don't want to do too many. Yeah. But I think it also keeps people fired up and involved. I know it fires me up. When I went there and I seen – some of them guys that hadn't been there, right. and they're signing up, and they're they're you know Will Osborne was like, dude, we need to do this in Cortez, man. We'll get the we'll get the rivalry, we'll get the people out here, and we'll get it happening. So yeah. that to me was trying to organize these um, is, is by what you get the reaction from people, and uh, the reaction was like, the, and you've been to almost every one with me. I think the reaction was way better than previous ones. Other people were on the fence about it, you know. So we're trying to turn over a new leaf on yeah. the Florida guys. Not that the old leaf was bad, but <laughs> it's no different than Just our charter recharge, business. You know? Recharge, and you have to do stuff different. Just like advertising or marketing your charter business. What worked 10 years ago, I can promise you, still works, but you got to tweak it. you got to constantly tweak it. You know, make give it a tune up, and and I think that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Some of the old timers were kind of questioning some of the stuff that I came up with or we came up with, and I think at the end they showed up and they seen the light at the end of the tunnel. Get the younger guys out here. How do what can I do? And I and then I started asking some of the. I asked the guys like Justin. I asked the guys like y'all. Hey, what do we? What do you think? Let's mm -hmm. let's go to the drawing board. Let's find something that that will attract them. And I think for the most part we did, and yeah. and, and uh, it was great. It was you know, great. another you know something else, and I, I we probably don't have the numbers on this, but I saw several people uh, that at the table that I didn't believe to be guides, and I think they are signing up as associate members. Yeah, which. Yep. From everyone that I spoke with, whether it be here in the shop, on the water, or anybody that messaged me on Facebook about the event, I had more inquiries from the general angler um, than I did guides. Uh, you know, I think Jace, who's watching, wanted to get involved. He couldn't make it, but up, and we're the first two to, to sign up. So that was encouraging, too, is not just the guide support, which was overwhelming, but that that carry over and just to the angling community like there were folks there just on behalf of the angling community so. yeah yeah I, I, and, and getting the uh because the florida guides it says florida guides association i know people are asking what it has to do with fishing well, it has a lot to do with fishing actually i know it's not let's give an official report we're gonna do that but right. uh the florida guides um is about guides but we we also operate under basically the same rules as anglers mm -hmm. with with our limits and and we're not commercial we we're, we are commercial but we're not right so it's not a everything we kind of do affects the anglers and and, and, and where, where anglers want to sign up and be a part of it and 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 make them feel like yeah you know they're a part of the the organization so that's what we've done um and i think with what scott moore touched on um he mentioned that uh you know, he had some folks in a, in respected positions in office and that he directly heard from them that they're one of the top-ranking uh, organizations, the Florida Guides, in terms of the validity or the power of whatever message. I think Travis together. has saw that yeah. going to a few meetings. It, I mean, they, they listen yeah. to what we have to say. We're, yeah. we're respected in there. And I, I was told that before yeah. I went, and I thought, oh, yeah, So whatever. if that's the case, but it's, it then, is. It, then it's important to get the associate member, the, the angler, not not only a guide, but have a collective of uh, different folks, you know, that come from different walks of life. A, a big success as far as the way I look at it. What's up, James? Um, James, thank you to James Garrison. All the Flats Mafia guys helped me on promotions with this as we did. 
Um, I'm trying to think anybody else that promoted it. Uh, just in, in the guides, I made some calls to yeah. Steve Betts. Hey, man, reach up your boys up in that side of the bay. Mm-hmm. I reached out to areas that people have pool, you know, yep. have a voice, and, and, and got some of the guys that show up. So thanks to everybody. Everybody yeah. that showed up the whole nine yards. It was a great event. And uh, look for one, uh, I don't know, five, six months. Want to get to this question here? Well, we got to yeah, start. how important is proper footwear, and what do you guys use when you're fishing? Um, I'll go first on that one. Uh, footwear, i tell you, Richard, my back, I've been guiding quite a while now, and my back is, you know, as you, everybody starts out wearing sandals. It just feels like you need to do it on the boat. I, my doctor told me, go to tennis shoes, and I thought, that's kind of dumb. These things are soft, but it has – to do with your balancing and, and using your toes and all that stuff and your tendons which run in arch your back support, arch support. in our support um so anyways i went to shoes and uh night and day difference mm-hmm. i like wearing shoes on the boat another plus to wearing shoes you ain't gonna worry about busting your toes on 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 latches sure so i i have a set of columbia's the new ones they're the drain the they're the most comfortable shoes i've had i've got two sets absolutely love them um I wear my boots to throw the net, and then after I got thrown the net, um, I'll put my my shoes on. Mm-hmm. If I'm in the summer, I got two sets of Columbia. I got a real old set that I wear when I'm throwing my net. They get soaking wet. I take them off, kind of drive my feet with sandals. Well, I they, know Travis's signature pair of sandals. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, you know, day to day it changes for me. We just had this conversation the other day. Yeah. Uh, I actually wear. Uh, I've had them all. I've had the Sperry's. I've had the the Reefs. You know, all the major had rainbows. All the major, you know, flip flop manufacturers. Yeah. And I just can't keep a pair from either stinking. a rotting apart. Stinking, I mean, stinking man. is be honest. Stinking. Stinking's a given. Yeah. But I mean, like literally just rotting apart. Yeah. You know, you wear them every day. Yeah. They're constantly wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, mm-hmm. and then you get the sun, and so they end up just. Uh, that material that goes between your big toe ends up kind of deteriorating, and one day you got a blowout, yep. you know? And so I've actually been using um, – these are the uh, rust Star art. support? Uh, no, O'Neal. Sorry, O'Neal. O'Neal. So I wear a pair of O'Neal's. I don't know. You and, don't have uh, a model number to give them. So there is no model number. They're, them. they're the gray O'Neal's. Show them how thick the soles are on. Yeah. Bro. Take them off and put them to the GoPro here. No, it's like, no, it's it's like on, Travis. We don't want to bust those things out from underneath the I table. Gotta dude, say, I got to This is Travis's arch support. Yeah. <laughs> that's it right there, dude. That's pushing. But, I think that's hey, well, it's, it's whatever but, works. But, bro. so, and, and there's a lot of times where I'll kick them off and I'll go barefoot. You know, it all just depends. But. During tarpon season, I, I wear tennis shoes. Yeah, yeah you know? I say, I've seen you at the dock with shoes. Yeah, like during tarpon season, for whatever reason, I use tennis shoes. Um, this time of year, I think when it's hot, just because I've got really sweaty feet. And so I for me, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, and I don't really like wearing socks, and you got to wear socks with your tennis shoes. Eh, you don't and so, well, they're really going to be bad. Well, like, I, uh, but anyhow, so, yeah. so that's, and, and, you know, if my back is a little sore, if I've run quite a few doubles yeah. or, you know, Something like that, or if it's cold, which is what we're coming into. Yeah. When it starts getting cold, yeah. uh, no the foot's wrapped up, brother. Yeah. I mean, I'm wearing I'm wearing a good pair of boots or you know a pair of tennis shoes after I catch bait. Uh, a lot of times I'll wear flip flops catching bait, and then dry everything off and you know yeah. finish well, up the rest of the day with dry feet. So. To your shoe solution, if you really like wearing shoes, what I do is I have two. Like I said, I have two sets. Yeah. And when I come back, if I don't have socks, my feet are the same way. Do they get rank? But I'll take and because they they're drain makers, they 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 dry pretty fast. They got yeah. actually drains. I'll I'll spray them like I'm spraying yeah. the boat, and then I'll hang them on my on my tower and the legs. Yeah. Then I stick my ones on the next day, and I just kind of rotate them. Yeah. So it, it does help, but they, if you don't spray them, dude. It, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's what, well. Here, I'll give you what we carry here, and then I'll give you what I wear every day. So, the two companies that we carry that are for the orthotic purpose, you know, is Sims. They have a patented right angle footbed. It's not comfortable Whoa, for everybody. Big word. <laughs> big word. But what it does is it's going to keep your all your lower body, your, your lower back, doctor. and all that <laughs> footbed comfortable. Yeah, but it's going to give you the right posture all day. So it's made for. It's actually made for guys fly fishing and pulling all day. Yeah. So it's going to be somebody who's going to be on the back of a pulling platform six hours standing up. They don't leave it. You know. Um, so that's one option. I've gotten a lot of good feedback on that. 
um, and then soft science is the other one. Um, they're just bigger shoe, goofy. you know. They look a little goofy, but they are I comfortable. Did, I did want to try the cool those. Factor yeah. is like one. You can try both so of those Crocs, out. So are they Crocs, Crocs. But, but they're comfortable, man. I, 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 I wore several to take the GoPro and show the scar on my. I almost broke my leg. They're slippery. Shit. That's Dude, the only I, challenge. When they wear I out, slipped. the bottom of them. Do you slippery. know the Canyon Bay deck? Uh-huh. I was throwing chum at the bridge. Throwing. I have my Crocs. They're a little worn out. I slipped and I came down right there on the corner with all my weight. Split my shin like this wide at the bridge. I got chum bait, I, and I just smoked the bait too. Like I'm trying to get my anchor. <laughs> Dude, I We've seen you the, throw, bro. No, I you can't blame yeah. it all on the Crocs. I had bait everywhere, and I <laughs> and I slipped, and I, to that day I've never wore a set of Crocs. And it yeah. just the, the, with that mix the, with the with the chum. Now supposedly they got some new Crocs out, but I, yeah. I'm done. Well, I'm, almost, I'm surprised they didn't break my leg. So the point is, you got three different answers here. I saw seven different answers come on there. So whatever works for you, I you know yeah. try them on and get something that you find to be comfortable for you. Um, you know. So, Depends on how long you're on the boat, yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but I, I, uh, I'm going to throw this out there. I bought a set of Columbia's. I, I was in a pinch knee sandal, so I just went to Bells and bought Columbia sandals. And I just commended their shoes. Their sandals are garbage yeah. with a capital G. What about the extra toughs? I know you got some of those. I, and I was going to say, I got, I, love I, I got some of them on right now. Yeah. I like. I don't wear them on the boat, but I, I wear them like yeah. when I walk in the backyard if I'm yeah. doing stuff on the boat. I do. I, like I wear them every day on the boat since – Right before I went to Puerto Rico, so that's like four months of use. They look great. They smell great. They haven't blown out. Smell yeah. great. They smell great. Wow, they smell like that's Fabuloso. Powerful. That's what that's I clean. The nice that's thing powerful. is I clean my boat with the Fabuloso. That's powerful. You know, that's powerful. Do you throw you know, my lady's Puerto Rican. He soaks his yeah. feet. <laughs> he soaks his Dang, feet. Travis, Travis giving it. To terrible. I had them three weeks. They're like 50 bucks, too. Like, not cheap. They blew out. The sandal blew out. I'm like, I didn't even wear them on the boat. I'm like, these Man. things are garbage. Garbage. Well, we got to eventually talk some fishing, so you want to hit the break real quick? We're going to take a little break, guys. Take a little pause here, a few words from the sponsors, and when we get back, we're going to do some fishing reports. Yeah. Talk about a little fishing forecast and uh, answer any questions you guys may have. You're watching Tampa Fishing Outfitters Live Fishing Report, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. You're watching Tampa Fishing Outfitters Live Fishing Report. Myself, Captain Travis, Captain James, Captain Jason in the studio. And if you're just joining us, we did a little recap on some of the events we've been doing. Uh, We had a nice event here at TFO. We did a uh, Florida Guides Association event last night at Hula Bay. And uh, now we're going to talk a little fishing. We talked a little bit about shoes, which is all over the board. But um, let's talk a little bit about fishing, guys. That's what most of our folks want to hear about, so let's do that. And uh, we'll follow up with uh, some of the stuff coming up we got in the future here. And we've got some big sales. About Black Friday. Black yeah, Friday. Sure. Um, but um, we're still seeing a few schools of reds that are that have been a little tough to get. They're mixed in with jacks. I got some um, earlier in the week. Last week we whacked them pretty good. Um, we, had a, a, we had a banner day late last week, you know bunch of big reds and then i lost about a 38 inch snook right by the boat um got a ton of snook it was a great trip um the, the bigger snook it been a little hard to get i think they're still in transition but i'm starting to see them starting to move in the creeks and the docks and and uh but i don't think the big ones are really pushing i think this cold front we got is going to help yeah it'll move some stuff around water temp I, i'm not sure what it is i'm three negative 58 since the summer but ernie uh sheep's head is all temperature based man it's well, all. They spawn too in February. Sheep well, said, I know, but I mean, it's, get caught, it'll, it'll happen get when the temperature changes, yeah. man. We're at January, February winter. I don't want it, but we're, I think that's where we're going to have that yeah. brute, well, you, if you, you know, look cold. The, I think we're going to have small bait. I was telling him today I need my quarter inch back because I think we'll be throwing. Remember we had to throw quarters yeah. on the marker? I think yeah. we're going to be there. Oh, it's, well, I mean, if you're getting it there now, you're, you're, 
you're right in between it. I mean, it's not even yeah, giant beat out there yet. But, um, yeah, I'd say late January, February is normally the best time to do the uh, the big spawn for the sheep's head. Rule of thumb is one of the newer full moons. Yeah. One of the newer full moons in uh, February, you're going to have to spawn. And actually, sheep's head fishing typically is at its prime in the March. I just think most right. yeah. of us quit We're done. With it. Like exactly. right after the, the hard oh, cold front. It's just all based on that water temperature, like man. One of the moons in March is, is game time, but come March, I, I think we're ready to go. What's that? Am I supposed to do something now? You know what that is right there? Rick. Rick, oh, you watching? God. Oh, God. Hey, if you don't know, you Fiddler. don't know. You, I remember now. If you don't know, you Fiddler. don't know. <laughs> I've seen Ken say the shrimp on a jig head. So, you know, Travis, I can't I was going to fiddle up on that right dude, there. Dude, he's so persistent. <laughs> like, I end up caving and doing what he does. I'm like, I gotta try it. <laughs> yeah. It's like every day, if you shut the dock every day and he's like this, or he's like, power the pin, or he's like this, you're like, all right, man, I'm just going to give and try it. And then it actually <laughs> works. I'm like, all right, dang it, man. Those, I tell you, man, we used to, um, and not to get way off subject here, but it seems like a few guys have actually mentioned Sheep's Head. Um, and so we'll talk about it for just a second, but when we were kids, man, you know, we did anything to try to catch fish. You know, you're always playing around. And at Simmons Park, there was always, mil I mean, like millions of fiddlerberry buckets, and mm -hmm. we did the whole nine yards. But, um, you know, black drum, um, whiting, mm -hmm. whiting, and, <laughs> and sheep's head. I mean, and even a mangrove snapper will eat you one. Sit on a five but bucket while you're but, getting, but <laughs> let me tell you something though: if you're around sheep's head, if you're on a sheep's I'm head so bite, if you're crab. catching sheep's head, do yourself a favor and drop down a fiddler crab. You won't believe it. No, hey, no, I agree. Because with you. they are it, they are money bait. I mean, it is it is bait. insane yeah. how I mean. You think about a shrimp. You know how they smell. You think about all the different things on on what these fish they, are, they how are. they can find their their yeah. their food source, but. You drop this little bitty crab down in the middle yep. of the bay, and you're going to catch a sheep's head. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's amazing. But um, anyhow, so. Mussels, too. Uh, oysters. Yeah, oysters, mussels. I, I had a customer, like, dude, I was like, we're going to go sheep's head. It was years ago when I was getting, we had some six, seven pounders, like big yeah. ones. Dude, he shows up with a bag of mussels. I felt so like dumb i'm like wrecking them son well i'm like my customer who's booking me shows up with i'm like yeah got, he got shrimp and he, <laughs> man i scraped these up last night i'm like dude you are dedicated like hey like, dude we start dry and i'd never fish with them because Game it's just on. kind of odd tiger yeah. will definitely hit Travis, that for you bud dude oh, we I dropped know. these things down we ran out of them i was like i mean they were hitting the shrimp but it was there was no comparison yep. i was like we ran out, and I'm like... It's the real deal. I got done, though, and I was like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go do all that. <laughs> that yeah. I can agree with that. I don't see Jason out there shucking oysters no, at, at, at 11, 11 for his next trip. What did Tiger put on there? Oh, the food drive. Yeah. Oh, they um, got another food drive. The screen there, man. You're making me dizzy. Well, it's, I can't really get... There we there go. There we go. Food drive. We got it, Tiger. We got it, buddy. Is that no? That's a different one, dude. <clears throat> that is. Yeah, a we're gonna. One. We got two. It sounds like we're gonna talk this about one, the this one. This one here. Uh, we're gonna cover our events here in just a little bit. But thanks for putting the information up there, Tiger. This is one that's actually happening down in Apollo Beach, and then we have the annual one that Jason and I have gone to for a number of years. Uh, Danny, we, we all you know used to go to yeah, fill the I, boat, go um, which is down. It's normally down in Tampa, down near Ebor. Uh, I can't remember the exact um, I can't remember the exact name of the location, but it's down there at Metropolitan Ministries. Yeah, it's one of it's I'll, I'll pull it up. that's a unique one. Yeah. Um, we'll go over it. But later. yeah, we'll go over it. That's a unique one. If you if you do want to go drop some food off, go to that one. It's if you're down that way, mm -hmm. it's a really. But, um, anyhow, so, let's uh, let's finish up fishing get back reports. On reports. We talked about um, Jason's. What have you been doing lately? I, you know, snook fishing has been on fire that's probably been i've had a, quite a few family trips over the last few weeks and so i always enjoy uh fishing the snook bite when they stack up and they and they're in that transition period when they feed heavy and so that's been something that uh okay tiger so they're working with perfect them. but um perfect so that's something that i really like doing is fishing those snook when they're really balled up yeah. and this time of year is a good time to do it we do it a lot, you know, I'd say early winter and then early spring. 
you know, it's the same, vice versa, when they're, when the they're, opposite heading, pattern when they're, they're heading, heading into the estuary it. in the yeah. backcountry and when they're coming out of the, the backcountry and into the estuary. And so uh, I really enjoy doing the weather and tide thing. We've had some really low tides. Uh, fishing in the Canyon Bay, hadn't really been able to get to some of the areas that I'd really like to. Um, but going forward, we're going to be running some more f- trips off the skiff. Mm-hmm. It's going to give us that ability to get in the backcountry with some live bait and get on those fish that are ponded up. A big thing right now is those fish aren't quite in there They're yet. Not, yeah, they haven't and really so staged. And so there's not really a huge benefit to getting to the backcountry, to getting into those shallow ponds, uh, because the fish just aren't there yet. Yeah. So They're kind of the poking first, in, but they ain't The first really cold front, out. you know, the first one or two cold fronts that really get our, our temperature to drop yeah. is what's going to drive those fish to the backcountry, and it'll be a really exciting time to get – into some of those areas and fish. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Be catching some redfish on the exterior islands to those pond up, you know, on the lower tides. We get them on the outside of the sandbars and cruising around some of the mangrove islands. Pothole fishing has been excellent. Pothole fishing has yeah. been really good. We've had some clean water. We've had low I, would, tides. I wouldn't say the water is super clear yet, but it's definitely clean. And we've had the, we've had them negative tides. It, ne- the negative tides morning. are, are yeah. starting to go out, are starting to show up. And the water's cleaning up, but it's not quite here yet because of the wind. Yep. We've still had a little bit of wind, and that Which first cold front up a little bit. That first cold front is going to knock down the algae. Mm-hmm. It's going to clean the water up, and um, expect to see a lot more fish. Yeah. yeah. You know that you're not being able to see right now. So. But this is that's also the time that you need to look at. I've been actually using, and I want to get into a little bit of leader talk later, but I've been using Ohiro 40 fluorocarbon. But when that water clears up, when you got you got to probably downsize your leader a little bit. A hundred percent, it'll it'll change it. It'll ability yep. through the water column, yep. and uh, you'll have to kind of switch it up. and And they'll tell you because you'll see the fish, and you won't want to. Yep. They'll eat chowers, and they won't eat your baits. And yep, that's the know. telltale sign. Down we got to change something, you know. And then, uh, last but not least, would be the trout. Mm-hmm. Starting to see good numbers of trout showing up. No big ones yet. You know, quite a few in that. 14 to 16 inch range hadn't seen any real big gators um with the i think the biggest one we've caught over the last like three or four weeks might have been about 20 21 inches Mm -hmm. and a lot of you know juvenile small trout so that's been good yeah i I mean our our bite's been good it tapered off you know the only day that i could say where we had to work a little bit was tuesday but i mean going back to you know from Tuesday to Tuesday, so let's go like, if I look at the last week, trout bite where I've been fishing has been phenomenal, and I actually ran into a situation Friday and Sunday, and even a couple of days the week before, where I couldn't get trout under 20 inches. See, that's the Guys wanted to take nice. some in. Um, now, I can tell you that with the warming trend towards the end of that period, when I really, when I mean, really yesterday and Monday. Um, you know, I started marking temps up around 80, yep. and I went to a place that uh, I kind of let rest. I said, they're going to be here. And we pulled up, and the first trout in the boat was 19 inches. Within 30 seconds of putting the power poles in the in the ground, Last that was the last trout we caught. So yep. it really, I think that water temperature, water temperature where I'm at is the key. drove them, you know, it either shut them down. I saw, I didn't see as many laying in the potholes, but I saw enough, but just really couldn't get that feed on. Flats that are like adjacent to those creek mouths, um, residential canals, which have got a lot up where I fish, those fish are, those snook are in numbers there. Sure. Um, it's been a little work to get them to eat, especially with the, you know, the clearing water lately. Um, but I think that uh, we're going to start to see those fish get in that mode, and maybe it'll be this next front that really tells them time to eat because it's going to get real soon. Um, and it so marks, we'll see what happens. We mark that time of year where we're fish low tides during the day. You know, yeah. Most of us are, fi- are daytime fishermen, Yeah. okay? And so over the next few months, guys, plan on fishing low water. Plan on fishing low tides. It's going to be know, part of it. And, and I do that a lot on my charters, and that's – you know, some people ask me, well, why do you have a tower? What's it important about having a tower? And as a guide, especially during I get on the trolling yeah. motor and move around, when this water cleans up, you know, the fish may have been here last week or three days ago, and now they've moved up to this area or this area. And um, the low tides are going to move those fish around. Sure. They're going to push those fish out of areas that they've been sitting for the last few months. 
and where they end up on the next tide swing mm -hmm. might be a quarter mile down the shoreline, yeah. you know, moving back towards a river or towards a creek or whatever the case may be. So um, it's one of those times where you get out there. If, if you're a guy that has eight, nine spots, this is the time of year where you move that to 20, yeah. where you go find a new pothole, you go find a new creek, you go find a new edge. Yeah. You know, I always tell people, like, this is, this is R&D right I'm now. I mean, it's, yeah. this is the time when you find that new trough that today it may not summer, that deep creek or that deep little sure. trough that runs through a flat may be, you know, the hot spot. So, so let's so, break that down. I mean, let's get – let's – really break it down what you mean by doing that r&d because i talk about a lot i talk about that a lot in seminars when i talk about low tide fishing you're doing your recon you know um for those that are out there i mean i assume you're wanting to do that at the lowest possible tide that you have in front of you and it depends on your boat it yeah. depends on your style of fishing it depends on what you're looking for right you know but if you're a if you're the typical flats guy you know um I enjoy getting out there on the lowest tide possible. Mm -hmm. I want to see around a full moon, the negative tide with a, a north wind. I want to see where there's water left. Mm -hmm. That's going to give me the best opportunity to find. You know, anybody ever looked out over a flat? And if, and if you've been out fishing the last two weeks, you've seen it. Uh, a good one is Simmons Park. You know, if, if you're down by Simmons Park in the next two mornings, you know, or, or now they've moved into the afternoon a little bit, but. The next moon, you're going to see it again. But, I mean, it'll be dirt from, you know, Apollo Beach to yeah. Simmons Park. Oh, yeah. And you won't see that the whole entire summer. Right. But, I mean, right now you'll see it. And mm -hmm. so it gives you perspective on where there's still water and where those fish are going to go. Right. And you can carry that knowledge in. I mean, I know we're talking about what's on the horizon with these low tides that we're going to continue to try and fish. So going out and doing your homework to set yourself up for that. But... I've also learned invaluable info about flats being out there in a low tide in the winter, applying that comes up whenever. You, you know, obviously, you know, we've we've done it to the to the point to where we've became fishing guides and, and enjoy taking other others out and sharing the information and sharing the the stuff that we took a long time to figure out and, and be able to fast track through a four hour period and put yourself in the right place right. at all times to catch fish. And it doesn't always come that easy. No. And a good portion of that comes from those years of struggling, the years, the day of not catching anything. But the information that you absorbed that day uh, benefited you three weeks down the road or next year or whatever the case may be. And so um, it's all about building that member bank. It's all about taking, taking it in for the day. You know, shedding off all the stuff that went wrong yeah. and keeping the few little things yeah. that, you, that you learned. It's not always going to be the greatest fishing day, right. but figure out a way to, to make you a better fisherman, yeah. whether you're catching fish or not. I'd say, that, I'd say one thing, like if you, you know, if you don't want to go hardcore, one, one easy piece of advice is, is that I've always, when I'm making my way onto a flat and I'm making my way off a flat, I'm always trying to be on the front of the bow seeing what Taking i got a look. going on yeah um you know now you can you know it's t times a thousand you get on a flat there you can't even get onto that flat well i'll stay on the outside and walk by now i have the tower so i get that perspective right so i can see a lot further in the distance but even without it you can get on a cooler you can get on the deck um, right you can stand up if you're in a kayak and just look out on there and look for those little pools that are still on that flat if you do mm -hmm. see that water wash out so that's a that's a great piece of advice um you know, yeah, I think it, it's going to lead to to a lot more consistent nine spots. Can you double that? Can you triple it? And that's and you that's can. sort of what you do this time of year. You know, and and the nice thing, and I know you got uh, something to say there, Jason. But you know, the one I wanted to add to that was you start to really get into the simplicity of fishing when you get into winter. A lot of guys historically, now this year may be different. Every year there's a few more, but a lot of guys kind of back off. They kind of hit the, hit the brakes a little bit. Holidays too, um, so well, and I mean, you know, they don't want to go out there on a day that it's blowing 20 and it's 40 degrees. You know, bait's going to be tough. Bait may disappear, but you know, it sort of sim makes it simple because you can go get some shrimp. Yeah. You can go throw some artificials. That's sort of the natural pattern this time of year, or as we're coming into these colder months. Um, you're going to see that more and more, and 
you won't see a, a giant you know difference between using live bait and it's all about having a bait in the water yeah. um and, and you can catch fish and be in the right spot so you know the guys that like catching shrimp are going and buying shrimp and doing that whole deal you're coming up into your you know mm -hmm. time to shine yeah. because uh you know it, it, it's just as successful as uh live bait sometimes last week man it's a great product well before Suck we go on break what were you going to touch on on this note on this oh break? i forgot all right <laughs> no oh. actually no i remember now uh, what i was going to say with the with the extreme low that. tides too um <laughs> look at docks docks get a lot easier to fish when you have Oh yeah, Four feet. that's a great point. We didn't even yeah. touch on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hit docks not, not only because when the tides low, you can get up underneath them docks more. You have a little more room for air when you're throwing at docks. With that being said, respect people's docks. I had a guy out the day come out there and get mouthy, and I was just like, whatever, man. I, docks. Keep in mind they have their boats. Try not to throw bait in their boat. That's a that's a good that's a good but, point. <clears throat> and and Jason, I'm gonna cut you off just because we need to go to break, but. Let's talk, cut me off. Let's talk a little dock fishing. Cut me Let's talk a little dock fishing. So you don't get cut off on dock the dock. Dock fishing and food drives. Uh, we we'll get back. We'll talk about what docks to yeah. pick and how we pick them. So yeah. guys, hang tight. We're gonna take a little break, and when we get back, we're gonna be talking about dock. So before the break, guys, we were talking a little bit about some of the stuff coming up. We did some fishing reports, and, you know, Jason kind of touched on something that we didn't get to, and it's something that between the, the guys sitting here, we'll all spend some time over the next few weeks in residential canals fishing docks. It's going to happen. You beat my docks if, you, if, you, if you want I to in on them. win, you saw me? Yeah. Which ones? Don't worry about it. I got my own. Hey, bro. I, I share. I hey, share bro. with you, Travis. Back in there, back in there, though, I, I got, I got. I didn't come out. Oh, oh, no, I didn't go in there. That wasn't in that I one. I saw you fishing. It's all right. I share with you. Oh, well. well hey, listen. Anyhow, so uh, residential canals are going to be a great place to seek refuge from these winds, these yeah. north winds. You know, the, the, the trick to some of that is is getting out, getting bait. You know, if you can get bait and get back into some of these areas, uh, the fishing can be really good, especially in areas where there's residential canals and, and neighborhoods that are located close to flats. You know, those are going to be the, the better ones. You know, there's some really good ones over in St. Pete. There's some good ones up in the Upper Bay. There's some good ones on the South Shore. Uh, but those areas, some good ones on the Manatee River, you know, places that are adjacent to those heavily populated flats right. during normal well, uh, tides. Well, about it, where you've been fishing all they, fall and late They summer, fall off into the those closest ones of dock fishing. It don't always work, but it, it, it usually works. Is I like to fish docks that have mangroves around the docks. E and even in the residential areas, they'll have ma mangroves growing on the seawall. Uh, I like to find docks that are old, beat up. Um, dilapidated. 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 I've never, never that's forget. a big word. Never that's forget. Big word. I'm glad I used to debut You've that. never heard that word. No, yeah, I did. Has. No, let me <laughs> tell you. I'll yeah. tell you. Let me tell you the story. If you're a real dock for sure, Billy, you know, yes, no dude, pulled that. We were fishing some dilapidated docks. And yes, I was filming with them. That's where you got it. No, no. Oh, it's so I got it. Mike it's an old episode. So Anderson tries to call him out on the show because he didn't know it was a word. That's where I got it from. Come to find out. Billy was a little Old smarter Nobles. than what we thought of. It was Old funny. Old Noble's reading the Webster. But uh, anyhow, um, if you got some old broken down seawalls, that's always good. I like there to see go, some mangroves around the docks because I, I think it gives yeah. a little more habitat. Um, muddy bottom, too, when it gets cold. Cold, yeah. Anything, sure. Any kind of heat holding, 
you know, components like uh, uh, muddy bottom. Radiating. Uh, yeah, to radiate on the seawall. Or you, you fish the side where the sun's beating on the seawall yep. or the bank. 100%. So just little stuff like that. I can't wait to do that. Yeah, you know, but here's the downside. Now, after a couple is, weeks of it, I get sick of it, but I can't wait to get into yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's always one of those things, and, you know, the customer – Here's the scenario: is the customer calls up and says, "Hey, are we going to be able to to make the trip today?" And you go, "Yeah, you know, we're going to fish some residential canals." And it's always like, "Let's say what now?" And you go in there and you wreck uh, you the fish. To, but you have to um, look at your cup. play the you got to play the area. I mean, there's a lot of these basins, a lot of these coves, a lot of these areas where you can do some trout fishing. And yet you're in a residential area, but you're not fishing a dock. Right. You know, you're fishing those troughs. You're mm-hmm. fishing those creeks, those canals. Uh, I'm going but, on a limb to say we catch maybe not as many, but close more than most people would think that we've caught more trout in residential most, canals, in residential canals, sure, in oyster bars, sure, and everything but grass flats. Trout are known as grass flat fish, but realistically, when it gets cold. Particularly time of year, you know, because yeah. we've got some areas where, you and know, you do can, do good, we've got those open area fish that, but it seems to be those are the refuge fish. Those are yeah. sure. close to those local flats. They push off in. And, and the good thing, I mean, the thing about trout is they normally are in numbers. So yep. there's 20 there, you know, yep. or, or vice versa. But uh, well, the other thing. We had some I, creeks this, this, this spring that were money with a cap. Oh, them, yeah. That the water, I went in there and it's just not cold enough, but. When it gets cold, like I've been testing it, and these things, I mean, we went. I went in there, and I told you. Well, you've been seeing looking. negative fifty-eight, so I'd say it's a. If, if yeah. it ain't right yet, I've been seeing negative fifty-eight. Man, when it starts icing over, over, yeah, we I, gotta get my, the my ice pressure out. Is obviously off, but these creeks uh, in this early spring when it was super cold, there was a hundred snook, and, and there were some big ones. Got in the corner. There's just trout stacked up, big ones. Get up on the edge of the flat, yep. the bar. There's redfish laid up in and there. It's shell bottom, M- mullet. It's it's all good stuff, and uh, it's real protective. So you can fish it on a windy day. Yeah. You know, so they're they're not there. It's just not cold enough. No. But, but everything's a bit of smaller snook. Uh, the big ones are kind of sitting out of these. They're areas. on the edges. They're still in deep but water. One sure. about two. I'd say two more good cold like. We need one of them forty degree. Well, we've days. got a decent one. I saw a got one on the horizon. Yeah, boys. it's coming through tomorrow, right? Yeah. And it's going to be blowing a few a few days. But I saw the temps look like, um, you know, I saw Friday going to be sixty seven, sixty eight high, yeah. fifty one low. Yeah, I got. So a, we got I a got few a days of that. Hour. Yeah, yeah. Got a four hour on Friday. I'm probably going to push it back a little bit because I, I'm curious to see what happens with bait because we're been getting bait there. This is probably going to be land certain times of the day or it's going to be low um that pressure has been moving the bait around a little bit too so it's going to be interesting um to see what happens we're kind of being that i think we hit that transition point we're gonna have to go what we've been doing i don't know if it's going to work real well good. baits you know baits always moving around it gets weird you know the fish are really making a weird jump too and they're it's going to be a significant change you know um so long runs to the skyway and 20 knot wins it depends you know <laughs> you, you, you hope it? that uh yeah <laughs> some of the markers will get some of the Lower bait the you know yeah it, it depends on how drastic it is yeah you know there's several years where i didn't go to the bridge at all there was about three yeah, years yeah. in a row where i never went to the bridge if i went to the bridge it was because you know maybe the size of the bait or it was just a quickness thing yeah. you know but we never really yeah. Ran away from not ha- not well, being able to get bait. I went to the know? bridge less and less over the last five years, and I, and I'll tell you why. Um, I've had more eyes on the water when I wasn't there. I've had more options with. It's definitely with a go-to. Your network. Well, if I'm out, like we'll talk. And eight years ago, I didn't have that option. It was me and Danny, and 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 we didn't have as many options you know we got jason and and, yeah. and, and it, it just it gives us more options well let me give you a different perspective is you know because i've only been guiding a couple of years prior to that you know i'm a saturday sunday fisherman boat goes in the water well right. this time of year this cooler time of year boat goes in the water ride into the skyway oh yeah work on bait I, first, come back and fish that's how it worked you know of my i guy career anywhere. i ran yeah. to the bridge or i ran yeah. to the flats and i'd hit a marker here and there the markers uh, for me were inconsistent. I mean, when you're guiding, you're on a time schedule, so you have to be careful with that. Yeah. 
And uh, you also, it starts with bait. We have to catch bait. And, yeah. and the Skyway is a pretty good yeah. given. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a go-to. Yeah. Um, because I'll carry shrimp through the winter. I will. But me, I think our bait fishery is way better. If if we and can't we get options. bait, a lot of times if you can't, if you can't get bait on the on south On behalf shore, of the Upper Bay Bait Association, <laughs> oh, my bait is fire. <laughs> bait is fire. Right now, you got. I heard about the little bait. We got the little oh, yeah, bait. Right? We got tiny but bait. That's what yeah, I'm just saying. You talked to yeah. me in January. I've got a variety of bait. On a daily basis. That's well, the, our the, option what we is have though, is we've got the depth. So when that bait yep. does disappear, yes, you're right it's about that. going to 40 feet. And, when, and the closest guy to the markers at 40 feet yep. is getting the bait. Yeah. And guess who that is? <laughs> this right, chow. All right, we'll see. Ruskin, baby. Ruskin. <laughs> we're, the, we're the first shot. Yep. <laughs> but, the boat, don't hey, us there. you'll yeah, see exactly. us all. Yeah. Looking like that old movie Waterworld. We'll see them all. Hey, we'll see them all waiting on the bait boat. There. That's it. But anyhow, yeah, it's but hey, we got to We got to touch on those, uh, the food drives coming yep. up. We know yep. we got the Dio's Tales from Tiger. So if you guys didn't see it. I got the, it right here. You can scroll through the comments to get some details. It sounded like his was going to be Saturday. Um, let me just verify he, that. I think they're they're doing the same deal. They're just like a satellite location. Right. And right. Tiger, correct me. The 4 a.m. is probably wrong. I'm going to say 4 p.m. Yeah, so it's Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, Salty Shamrock, having a fill the boats food drive. Uh, that's the info Tiger shared with us. Looks like that's going to be in connection with the one you guys wanted to mention, which yeah, so is going to be down in Tampa. Yeah, so it's the Fishing for Hope. Um, Bill Miller, Mike Anderson, Glenn Plough, their major host, and then we got a bunch of people going to be out there. I, fortunately, unfortunately, probably won't be out there. Um if I don't fish, I've, I'm probably going to go to my daughter's soccer game. Okay. If, if it's weather and help out, it's that time of year where people need help, and I think it's the time to, to help if you if you can afford to. Sure. Um, it's Fishing for Hope. It's November 17th at the Metropolitan Ministries Holiday Tent. Um, the goal is to sink the ship. They're going to have probably a sea hunt from Pro Marine wrapped, and uh, it's an awesome event. Stop by. Whether it's what I want to uh, make sh make sure and tell people is, listen, if you can't afford to buy a tr truckload of turkeys, it doesn't matter. If you can bring a can of food, that can's going to help somebody. Can corn. And I and and I think that's key. You don't. It's not. It's not like well, let me see how much I can bring. The more you bring, obviously, the more it helps people. But we get people have you know different budgets right. and stuff like that just do what you can come out there stop by bill miller is is a wealth of knowledge with fishing and he and he's he's a great guy to talk to yeah. very and there's a, and there's and a lot is the same way and, and glenn plow they're all good guys they they love to see uh, bill really gets geared up about this um he's done this for years and every year he leads the uh and, and mike anderson f fell in that role now and all these guys you know they 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 really take pride in doing That's this. That's really cool. And um, but the uh, there's a map that I'm gonna try to see if I can put. I don't know if I can put. While he's looking at that, I'll tell you what I do with these food drives is clear out the the uh, pantry. pantry. Yeah, you the know, stuff like, that you don't have. go through the stuff that you know it's been in there for. You, you just haven't touched it. You bought it on a whim, whatever it is. Green you'd beans, be surprised. Oil. You'd be surprised. Um, you know how much? Because uh, you know, they're looking at stuff like, like you know, stuffing mix, canned beets, canned green beans. You know, canned corn. corn. You know, some of that stuff. I mean, those are those are items that are that are relatively inexpensive. And, and what they do to give you an idea is, you know, they will they will literally separate all this stuff into bins. You know, all these different items, and they'll categorize it. And they will make sacks for these families to come pick up for dinner, for their, right, for right. their Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. And, you know, so it's not just this one big truckload of stuff right, that, just it goes, somewhere. Yeah. that just goes off. There's a lot of hands involved. There's a lot of passion and commitment involved in getting these meals put together for these families. And the reason why I said if you can make it down to the Metropolitan Ministries in Tampa, you can actually walk through the facility other. I mean, awesome. the families are right there picking up the meals. Uh, it's a really humbling experience if if you can get down there and actually see it in operation. And we're going to try and get some of that information up on the page. 
Yeah, right. I I can't comment and attach. I was gonna attach this the because right. it's a little confusing when you get there. Just go to the Metropolitan Ministry. I don't. He don't have the address. I was looking on my. We'll work on here. getting. I'm sure we'll that's an info address. we can get and share to the um, fishing report page. So we'll have we'll have that coming up for sure. Yeah, if if anything, keep, keep an eye on the page, and I'll get the stuff up there. Yeah. I can at least do that, but I, I can't put it on the comments. Here. So why don't we touch on next week? You know, we got the holiday week. We're still going to run our show as planned, um, so you can count on us Wednesday night. Um, we got our special guest. Yeah, so so next week, um, via last night's meeting, like I said, we had a great turnout. Anybody that came to that, we certainly have Neil Holland, and he's got something set up called the Ghost Trap Rodeo, and yep. I didn't get – all the details on this which is fine because we're going to bring him in next week neil's going to come in and hang out with us and tell us all about what he's got going on it sounds like they're having a like a cleanup tournament yeah, clean the... up the bay mm -hmm. clean up all the derelict stuff clean up all the ghost traps derelict. and derelict. um there was another one they the went with right angle footbed dilapidated and derelict today dude we high are educated show right here. And that was one of these. High-end show. Yeah. High-end show. Good work, fellas. But, uh, so anyway, guys, Neil's going to be with us next week. He's going to tell us all about this stuff that he's got going on. It's a really, really neat way to get the angling and fishing community involved with some cleanup and offer some prizes. They've got some big guys on board. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I want to say power poles on board. They yeah, got some, I saw uh, it. Some man. of the big names have stepped I'm up. I'm familiar with that. that. Neil's going to be in with us next week. Again, that's the Ghost Trap Rodeo. And this is the uh, uh, inaugural year for this. Yeah. So hopefully we can help uh, make this a, a kind of a staple in the area and get things cleaned up. But uh, Can't wait to hear about more of it. In the meantime, guys, if you guys don't have anything else, we'll go ahead and get out of here. Wing House is calling our name. And uh, you guys catch them up till next week. Tampa Fishing Outfitters Live Fishing Report signing off. Captain Travis, Captain James, Captain Jason. We'll see you next week, guys. All Take right, care. guys. Thanks have a good one.